Hey everybody, good morning. It is day 27 of AMI. And I just want to say right up front, even though the theme for today is scientific theory, specifically cell theory, you don't really need to know much about either one in order to answer the questions. The questions are really more about reading and interpreting a graph, a bar graph. But we're going to go ahead and jump into this background information on theories and cell theories. And I've got a couple of videos for you too. So it starts off in science, a theory is an explanation of how something works. It has been tested and verified many times using scientific experimental methods. And then I have a little video for you about scientific theory versus other things. So a theory has been tested. It's kind of like a hypothesis that's been tested over and over and over and proven to be true several times. Okay. Cell theory is a theory. And it goes like this. The cell theory has three parts. All living things are made of cells. So whether it's a plant, animal, fungus, bacteria, anything, it's made up of at least one or more cells. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function of living organisms. What that means is there's nothing smaller than a cell or less than a cell that would still be considered living. Okay. And the third part, cells come from other cells. What that means is cells don't just spontaneously appear out of thin air or from non-living material. They come from other existing cells. Okay, and then I have a cool video for you about cell theory too and how it came about. Okay, so moving on. But what do cells contain? All cells contain carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, as well as water and other compounds. Okay, all of these things, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acid, and water, those are all molecules made up of atoms, and they are part of cells. Okay? But do all cells contain the same percentages of these compounds? And here we get to our graph. Okay? Our graph compares the percentages of some kinds of compounds found in a bacterial cell and a mammal cell. So if you look at our key, the red bars are our bacterial cells, and the blue bars are for our mammal cells, the percentage of total cell weight that it is made up of by water, by proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, or other molecules that we find in cells. All right, let's get to our questions. Question number one, what do the red bars represent? So in order to answer that question, don't really need to know anything about cells or cell theory or theories at all. Just come up to your graph and then use your key to explain what the red bars are for, okay? what they represent. Question two, what percentage of a mammalian cell is made up of water? How does this compare to the percentage of water in a bacterial cell? So you hit up, find mammalian cell for water. How does that compare to the bacterial cell? How are they alike? How are they different? Okay. Question three, which kind of compound, proteins or nucleic acid, make up the larger percentage of mammalian cells. Okay, so just between proteins and nucleic acids, which one makes up the larger percentage? So we just go back to our graph, find nucleic acids and proteins, mammal cells, the blue, which one is greater? Which one is more? Question four, in general, how do bacterial cell and mammalian cells compare in their chemical composition? Right, the molecules that we find in those compounds. Okay, so then we're looking at bacteria cell versus mammal cell for all the compounds. How do they compare? What's alike? What's different? Explain. Okay. I'll be watching for your questions as you have them. Just send them my way. And I'll answer them as quickly as possible. Hope you guys have fun with this one and enjoy the videos. Have a great day.